It's quite likely that every day you use a phone or computer to access the internet. In fact, you're doing that right now. But have you ever thought about how the data that makes up a video gets to your device? There are a number of ways information can be passed from the internet to your phone or laptop. The type of connection depends on your location and the capabilities of your device. We often use Wi-Fi to get connected. Let's talk about how that works. Wi-Fi is a way of connecting wirelessly to a network. At home this usually consists of a wireless router that broadcasts a signal. At school or at work this might also consist of wireless access points which do a similar job. To connect wirelessly, both devices must have appropriate and compatible wireless capabilities, though modern phones and laptops always do. Wi-Fi has a functional range of up to around 70 meters, which is limited further by walls, solid objects and even electromagnetic interference, like microwaves. We should also note here that not all Wi-Fi devices are equal. Wi-Fi has been through several iterations, A, B, G, N, A, C and now A, X each with improvements of range and speed over previous versions, and it's likely there will be many more coming. There's another common wireless communication method you likely use daily, mobile communications. This type of connection works in similar ways to Wi-Fi, but over much greater range. Instead of routers and access points, it uses radio towers and satellites, which function on much lower frequencies. Mobile connections also come in several formats, but most commonly we use 3G and 4G, with 5G coming in the near future. Another wireless method of data transmission is Bluetooth. However, this is more often used to transmit music to wireless speakers and headphones than internet traffic. This too has been through several iterations, each faster and more reliable than the previous. One of the most common connection types is Ethernet. Ethernet is a wired connection that's usually used by desktop computers, servers and network hardware in larger network configurations. Ethernet uses electrical impulses on copper wires to transmit data up to around 100 meters and is usually generally faster than a wireless connection. There are several versions of Ethernet, each of varying speeds and capabilities. Lastly today is fiber optics. These are often used to connect special pieces of networking equipment in networks that require high bandwidth. This is because optical fibers can transmit large volumes of data at very high speeds. The speeds are so high due to the use of light to transmit data along the glass threads that make up optical fiber. This also facilitates transmission of data over great distances, as long as the fibre is not bent, which can crack the glass in the fibre. At the moment, fibre optics are the gold standard in network connections, and many countries are moving towards this kind of connection for homes and businesses, due to the very high bandwidth that it allows. There are a number of ways computers can be connected to networks, but these are likely the most common ones you'll encounter. All of these connections are becoming increasingly faster and more reliable as we continue to use more and more data for our 4K video streaming and video games. Hopefully this helps you understand the ways devices can be connected to a network. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to give it a like. If you'd like to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell button to get notifications. And if you're a teacher, check out the links in the description for worksheets and lesson plans that go along with this video.